So, I'm gonna start or should I? Kick it off, man. All right. Since it was my idea. Indeed. Know, I've, I've been seeing this on Sports Center and all over ESPN. I wanted to bring up the upcoming August 26th Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor. I guess you would call it interdisciplinary fight, although it will be contested in a box hearing. So, I wanted to talk to you about this and get your thoughts, because you have coached athletes, and have you coached fighters? You know, just very amateur uh, MMA, and mostly it was the energy system development along with the strength training right. for them. Yeah. Right, I figured that there wouldn't be, because uh, you don't really have much much of a background at least in fighting, so I figured that you would at least be able to coach them in the weight room. Mm-hmm. But you understand a bit about fighters and how they work and how they train. So I wanted to bring this up to get your perspective, and I'll get mine. Um, in a nutshell, what we have here is the best boxer, at least at the time of his last fight, which I believe was in late 2015, September 2015. Currently what we have here is um, this upcoming fight. <clears throat> It's going to be August 26th, like I mentioned. It will be in Las Vegas, where Floyd Mayweather lives. And we have, he is 40 years, he's 40 years old and six months at the time of this fight. Against Conor McGregor, who is 28 currently, he'll be 29 in July. Mm -hmm. So he'll be 29 at the time of the fight. Floyd Mayweather, 5'8", Conor McGregor, 5'9". In terms of weight, Currently, Floyd Mayweather, 151 pounds. Conor McGregor, 154 pounds. <clears throat> Both lean. Uh, Floyd looks like he's taken pretty good shape since his retirement from boxing. Reach, Floyd Mayweather, 72 inches. Conor McGregor, 74 inches. Hmm. Professional record. Um, I believe Conor McGregor had one amateur fight in mixed martial arts, and he won by knockout. Floyd Mayweather had many amateur boxing fights, and he was an Olympic gold medalist prior to becoming <laughs> um, a professional. His record, Floyd Mayweather's, 49 wins, 0 losses, 0 draws, 26 knockouts. That's in boxing. Conor McGregor's MMA record as a professional, 21 wins, 3 losses, 18 knockouts. Net worth, not that this really matters, but Floyd Mayweather's net worth is $650 million dollars, to Conor McGregor's $22 million. Floyd Mayweather's had much bigger paydays, and he probably will for this fight, too. All of that taken into consideration, what do you think Conor McGregor's chances are of beating Floyd Mayweather? Fantastic uh, synopsis there on each of the athletes. You know, of course, it's easy to go with the snowball's chance in hell. No. Um, it's And therein lies the issue, where you get into the area of physical performance and specialization. So you find, you know, X, especially when the NFL Combine comes around, X number of people will talk about, like, oh, man, well, I can run a 4, 5, 40 and, you know, jump 30-something inches. Yes. Can you also carry a football, weigh over 200 pounds, be hard to tackle, and a number of other intangibles that are much harder to test than simply height and weight and reach, which, don't get me wrong, that obviously gives you a good tail of the tape as far as the anthropometrics, but skill, and especially a sport like combat sports that are so, so skill-oriented, you know, it's it's one of those things where you naturally, irregardless of my thoughts on the individuals and their character, but, you know, Floyd Mayweather has shown time and time again that he has incredible skill, even, you know, as he was getting older. I mean, obviously, he finished up fighting a much older Pacquiao, or not much older, but also an older um, boxer at that point, but... It's, you know, I, you would expect anyone who's a master in their given sport to always be a novice. And obviously there's a lot of transfer between mixed martial arts and boxing, especially when we're talking about the stand up and obviously just using the hands, but it's not a hundred percent. And we refer to, you can look at some people like Zatskiorski's transference index, which is if you develop a certain skill, uh, let's say for example, just let's use weight room talk you increase your uh, front squat by 10 pounds. Well, what's the transfer then to a movement like your back squat? And you'd expect the transference to be pretty good. 
And however, some people, will, for example, say you gain 30 pounds on your bench press. Well, that could literally have absolutely no transfer to your back squat. And right now, I guess kind of the question of the day is how much does that MMA training transfer over to the boxing performance? Since obviously it's not like they're meeting in the middle here. They are meeting over in Floyd's world. And in Floyd's world, he is obviously one of the top dogs. So, and I, I guess this is where it comes down to the coaching and the specialization as far as what are they going to do with Conor McGregor's training, because obviously he doesn't have to worry about kicking, doesn't have to worry about a ground game. He obviously, it's all the stand-up striking, and obviously you're going from an open glove, or yeah, open-fingered glove to obviously a closed glove. You're talking about you are now limited in the areas of the body you can hit. You've changed up the area of really where you're fighting, as opposed to being in the octagon. You're now obviously in a ring. So all of those variables, how he and his training team approaches those to optimize them for the ring, I mean, that's, that I think is the big question. And it, on right. that end, you know, from what you've done with your research, what have you heard when it comes to uh, his training team and what he's trying to do specially for this, uh, for this match? Well, I, I first heard about the potential for this fight a few months ago, um, everyone thought it was a joke. I immediately thought that this would, in fact, happen because Floyd Mayweather loves money. Oh, yeah. This is a massive event. Everyone will purchase this. Dana White's selling this. Bob Arum in boxing, he's selling this. Floyd and Connor will promote this better than any two athletes have ever promoted an event. This will make Floyd and Pacquiao look like child's play. Mm -hmm. in terms of box office numbers. So as far as what Conor McGregor has specifically done in training, I don't exactly know. I know that he's in shape year-round. I've heard that he wants to fight again in the octagon before the year's end. Good Lord. So he does not anticipate taking a lot of punishment from Floyd, and perhaps he shouldn't anticipate that. They'll be fighting, I believe, at 154 pounds, which Floyd has fought boxers at 154. Uh, mind you, Floyd is a five-division, five-weight class champion. So he's, he's fought all over. Uh, he's never fought heavier than 154. Whenever you make the jump from 147 to 154 in boxing, in case you didn't know, what happens is they no longer will use eight-ounce gloves. Uh, welterweights in boxing at 147 use eight-ounce gloves. Yeah. 154-pound fighters use 10-ounce gloves. This fight will be contested using 10-ounce gloves, I've heard. Mm -hmm. uh, don't quote me on that, but that's, that's what I've heard. In any case, Conor McGregor's strong, and he punches hard. I don't think that 10-ounce gloves, as opposed to the 4-ounce that he's used to, I don't think that's going to make a huge difference. I don't think that's going to slow down his punching. Uh, the thing about this is, this is all happening pretty soon. August 26th. Yeah, it's... So, he's not having tons and tons of time to train as a boxer. Now, he always trains his strike game, but you got to think about in mixed martial arts in that world, you got to train wrestling, you got to train boxing, you got to train Muay Thai, you have to train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, among others, probably. You have to learn how to fight on the ground and standing up. Uh, using your legs, he's going to have to get used to not using them. Um, it's, it's hard to say how exactly Connor approaches it. I know how Floyd will approach it. He'll approach it the same way he always does. Floyd's always in shape. Mm -hmm. He's always ready to fight. He's always, he's probably retired knowing he would probably come back and try to win number 50, would be my guess. Yeah. We know Floyd will be ready. We don't know exactly what Conor McGregor's going to bring to the table. So I'm not sure what to expect there. No, I, f I fully agree. And then, I mean, within that, anyone that's had an opportunity to do something like wrestling, boxing, you know, any type of combat sports, the not just the transfer of skill, but think about the sheer conditioning differences between, and this is where, you know, I understand that I'm definitely out of my element here, where, you know, being in great long distance shape, meaning running, does not mean you're in good wrestling shape. So how right. well... You know, cardiovascularly, if you're talking his heart, his lungs, and literally the ability to just pump frickin' blood, 
you know, Conor McGregor is ready to rock, and he'll be fine, you know, obviously being in shape. But as far as the actual ability aerobically to literally keep his guard up and keep his hands moving, and not just his hands moving, but being able to hit hard enough that it matters, and obviously be able to defend himself, like, all of that, that's, you know, that's going to be, once again, down to that training and how fast you yeah. can manipulate those variables, not right. to mention how fast can you train those skills. I mean, we're still talking about basic human physiology, and it just doesn't move that fast, um, irregardless of drug use. And then right. you can talk about the wonders of the 10,000-hour rule of literally how long it takes to be a master, especially something like, you know, boxing, where, I mean, you figure they've got, essentially, you know, he's got two months. So even if he's practicing five hours a day, every day, which, you know, we can debate on the possible realities of that, we're still talking he's only going to be at you know, gosh, would that be 600 hours of, you know, more boxing practice compared to someone who obviously is a master of it? I don't know. Either way, it'll be the biggest payday of Connor's life. Oh, yeah. And one of Floyd's biggest as well. Exactly. One of the most, you know, looked at fights in quite a long time since both of their personalities are so, um, how to say, um, over the top? <laughs> yes. Since they're yes. Both... They can both trash talk. Oh, yes. They're both... Yeah. So what it comes down to for me, is this happened once before, um, when James Tony, who was, who was an accomplished boxer, decided he wanted to step in the octagon and fight Randy Couture. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he got killed in 30 seconds. <laughs> so, and it, you know, it, because it was in the octagon. I think of this like, let's put um, something where skills transfer over a little bit. Okay, so let's, let's take someone like Cam Newton, who's a very good football player. Mm-hmm. Very athletic. Strong guy. Put him one-on-one against LeBron James, the best player in the NBA. Who wins? Well, obviously the question would be, what are they doing? You know, are they playing football? Are they hitting each other? Playing football? Or are they playing basketball? Well, there's a, there's a transfer of skill. You know, both throw a ball. Both run. Both are in very good shape. Both have good cardio. Um, there's no question that if they're playing basketball, LeBron James wins every time. And if they're playing football, somehow playing one-on-one football, let's say that that's a thing, mm-hmm. there's no question that Cam Newton wins. This is the same kind of a thing, the same thing that James Tony felt. There is, I, and I, I never say this about sports, there is zero percent chance that Conor McGregor will win at all. There is not, not one percent. You, you can't even give him a puncher's chance to beat Floyd Mayweather. Really? He probably won't even touch him. Floyd will probably toy with him for a few rounds and then probably knock him out because Floyd wants to. You know, Floyd, I mean, it would be disastrous for boxing if Floyd lost, right? It's mm-hmm. probably not good for boxing either way. <laughs> um, it would, it'll be a huge event. Everyone will watch. It's compelling. It's exciting. But if you tune into this fight, if you pay your hard-earned money for this fight, expecting a real fight, you're going to be disappointed. You should tune in for the event itself. I never say this about sports. Conor McGregor has zero percent chance of winning. <laughs> I mean, really, a full zero? You think so? You... A, a full zero. There is none. There is nothing that he can do. You let's take um, let's take someone like in, in fighters sometimes can cross over. You know, Brock Lesnar was fairly successful in this martial arts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he used PEDs um, in that last fight for sure. Shocker. You know. He was pretty accomplished even without, you know, touching dirty. He was a champion in UFC and people were shocked. They're like, wow, this professional wrestler comes into UFC and he and he becomes a champion. So why can't Conor McGregor go into boxing and become the you know, the the man who Puts a one at the end of Floyd Mayweather's record. Well, a couple reasons. Uh, people forget that Brock Lesnar was an NCAA wrestling champion. He came in with that skill already. And that's a big part of mixed martial arts, is wrestling. He had to learn the others. He already knew a bit of the others. 
Okay, so if you have a fighter, let's just say that this fighter was the perfect wrestler and was reincarnated in the next life as a man who did Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu from the time he could walk and became the perfect Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu athlete. And then he's reincarnated again in the next lifetime to become the perfect Muay Thai. And then the next one to become the perfect boxer. And so on and so on. All of those skills are somehow continued through these various lives. <clears throat> well, now you have someone that might be able to beat someone who's proficient in another discipline. Zero mm -hmm. percent chance Conor McGregor, who doesn't even know boxing, who's never had an amateur boxing match, be the best boxer, arguably, in the past 25 years. There's no chance. Floyd Mayweather was born with boxing gloves on. He has boxed since he could walk. He has boxed the best. He beat Oscar De La Hoya. Mm -hmm. He knocked out Ricky Hatton. He made Manny Pacquiao look weak. Manny Pacquiao was the man who had thunder in both hands and amazing hand speed. He beat Juan Manuel Marquez, who has also knocked out Manny Pacquiao. He beat Sugar Shane Mosley. He beat Miguel Toto. He beat Canelo Alvarez when Alvarez was 23 years old and had over 40 wins on his resume with no losses, and he was larger than Floyd. He has beaten people who have also been boxers since they could walk. Conor McGregor is not that. So this is a fun event, but in terms of who you expect to win, it's laughable and disrespectful to boxing to think Conor McGregor has a chance at all. Now, first, let's be completely clear. He has a chance. There's always a chance that a meteorite could come from outer space and just nail Mayweather right when the fight starts. And technically that would mean Conor could. McGregor won, right? Because Mayweather you know, sure. got crushed by a rock. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But once in terms of them a small chance, which I can I can listen to that argument. But as far as yeah, a legitimate like we should even be talking about odds other than, you know, the chance of getting struck by lightning and the aforementioned, you know uh yeah, space rock coming down. Right. It's it's yes. Now my question is more or less, will it be entertaining? And, yeah, will it be really worth the time? Will it be obvious that he's being played with? Because I think you got two things working in his favor, and one in that, just like Floyd, he has one of those very over-the-top personalities that you can't... I have a hard time parsing of whether or not that's just showmanship, if that's, you know, essentially their pro-wrestling persona, only obviously doing it with their professional sport which is always going to generate more interest in it than it was if they were, you know, a calm and quieter individual. I mean, you think of, like, obviously you can go back to your old school, Muhammad Ali, you know, that type of personality that also would drew people. Not, I mean, don't get me wrong, he had the skill. But he also right. had a personality that was just, I mean, it was captivating because he had that amount of energy and everything else and that type of belief in yourself that, you know, if... And Floyd obviously has, can run, can talk, but he obviously also can walk the walk, and he always seems very calm and collected. And, you know, it's if, you know, Floyd just lets it down for a minute, gets a little overconfident, maybe something happens that makes the fight more interesting. And, you know, right. and let's not kid ourselves. I mean, Floyd is, you know, he, it's been what, two years since he's fought professionally. Yeah, it's been it's been about two years from the his last fight was Andre Berto and I believe that was September of two thousand fifteen. Yeah. So I mean, obviously he's still in shape, but you know, reaction time goes down just a little bit as you get older. You know, yeah. your your power goes down a little bit as you get older, so whether he literally has the power to knock out Conor McGregor, probably. And, you know, it's just it's not so much Floyd in his prime, or Floyd, you know, just two years ago. Yeah, it's like, what is is this assisted suicide that we're about to watch? I, I don't understand what's right. going on. But now it's the fact that he at least is removed enough that you're not quite sure, you know, if everything is still there. And I think it probably, 
behooves them from a financial and interest standpoint to try to, you know, keep everything as under wraps as possible on both sides of the training camps so that, you know, people don't get an idea of like, you know, is McGregor even that great at striking or sorry, boxing, obviously he's great at striking and, you know, has Mayweather perhaps slipped a little bit, you know? Right. And, and you could make that argument. You could make the argument he hasn't fought in two years. You know, time catches up with everyone, even Floyd. You know, so he could be, he could have lost a step. He could have lost multiple steps. Let's say, for argument's sake, that he has. And let's say he's not taking it seriously. And he's not training very hard. And then Floyd's always had problems with his hands. Let's say that, you know, his hands are hurting him or maybe broke. Or let's say in the fight, he breaks both. Yeah. Even still, Conor McGregor doesn't have a chance. I, I can't I can't fathom Conor McGregor hitting him. I can't fathom him even getting through. The best, the fastest boxers in the world have not really gotten through to Floyd. He's been knocked down once in his career that's counted. That was whenever he threw a punch and broke his hand, and he fell back, and his hand hit the canvas. Once he's been knocked down. I can't. I just can't imagine anyone reasonably thinking that Conor McGregor would be able to beat him, even considering the age difference, and Conor McGregor is arguably in his prime right mm -hmm. now. Um, keep in mind that the larger glove will actually protect Floyd's hands more than he would if he were wearing eight ounce gloves. And slow down Connor's hands even more so. I'm glad you brought that up. Because you go back to specificity. What's the weight of the gloves they're using in MMA? Um, four ounces, I believe. Yeah. And four ounces, you know, it's like anything else. If I have someone hold, I mean, anyone who's thinking about it, like four ounces is nothing. But if I have you hold your right. hand out in front of you and you're holding on to four ounces and keeping your arms straight, you know, your arm's going to get tired. But if I have you hold a one-pound dumbbell, which is the equivalent of the gloves, and we're not even talking about the wraps that they're wearing underneath, turns out you're going to fatigue a lot faster. And not to mention, right. anyone can, you know, shadow box a lot faster than they're going to be able to throw those hands while wearing the gear. And I wonder if that's just kind of another way, you know, intelligent on Floyd's behalf to set things up in a manner that's making it even, I wouldn't say, yeah, perhaps easier for him to do well we're both protecting his hands because he's got the heavier glove, and then at the same time, slowing down his opponent, who's obviously nowhere in his caliber of boxer. Right, and and it could be, you know, I, I know I know that Floyd Mayweather, whenever he interviews, he talks about money. He wants money for big events. Um, he's got a promotional company. He's doing fine financially, but if he's going to be in a fight. He talks a lot about the money and wanting, you know, larger cuts than his opponent. Um, the reason that Conor McGregor is going to get paid the payday that he is is because he's going into Floyd's world. Now, keep in mind, if this were happening in Octagon, I would give Floyd Mayweather a zero percent chance of winning. Oh God! The qu it wouldn't be the zero percent chance. We'd be debating how fast in the first round was Floyd going to lose. Right, and and we would be debating that. Um, boxing is just such a specialized thing where it's mixed martial arts. It's interesting to me because they become so proficient at so many things. But for a guy that's been throwing punches since around the time that he could walk, you know, there, I just have a hard time believing that Connor will get through. I just, that's where I stand on the issue. I have always watched Floyd fight hoping this is going to be the guy that gets to Floyd. <laughs> uh, we can't watch that fight this way. Floyd, as much as he loves money, the thing that he loves the most is having that zero at the end of his record. And he will not take a fight unless there's high potential for payout with low potential for damage. That's why he waited so many years to get Manny Pacquiao in the ring after Manny Pacquiao is already 36 and well past his prime, mm -hmm. even though Floyd Mayweather was 38 at the time, Floyd Mayweather had not taken the punishment that Manny Pacquiao had. Yeah. He had a lot fewer fights than Manny Pacquiao. He'd never been knocked out. He waited, he waited, he waited until the time was right. 
and that's when he fought back down. Um, he feels the time's right now for McGregor because McGregor doesn't have a chance of beating him in boxing. <laughs> mm-hmm. And maybe it is that confidence, perhaps bravado, that you know is what's obviously setting it up on, on Connor's end, where it sadly it's you know setting yourself up for the fall. Right. You know, it's... And, and many think that Floyd can't can't knock McGregor out. Mm-hmm. Which that that's a more compelling argument for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know. Floyd's not a knockout specialist. He hasn't his last. Knockout was against Victor Ortiz, and I believe that was that was in 2011 or 12, I believe, um, and that was many would argue a cheap shot. Mm. After Ortiz headbutt him, the referee separated him. Floyd caught him with his hands down. Oh yeah, because um, you can and you can watch the clip. It it looks cheap. Because uh, Ortiz was, was coming in to apologize. Way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't ruled that way because the referee had already separated them and. There was no timeout. Um, he protects yourself at all times is, is the rule, and Floyd is masterful enough to take advantage of that. Believe me, Floyd would never have risked a disqualification loss. So yeah. He knew what he was doing. Um, and he knew what he was doing. But that said, he's not a major knockout artist. So I don't know if he can knock out McGregor. My guess is going to be that he will toy with him for a few rounds. McGregor will get discouraged. And Floyd will go for a knockout at the very least. Well, and just think about the getting in the difference between the pacing. An MMA, even championship bout, the amount of rounds that they do, though longer for each round, is, right. it's just, it's a shorter fight. And yeah, 25 minutes total against 36 minutes in boxing. And Floyd obviously knows how to pace himself, so... I almost wonder if that'll be the interesting kind of fall off you see what would be the equivalent of, yeah, getting into the, um, gosh, would it be like the, yeah, the 8th, ninth, and 10th round if that's when you start to really see a separation and that's when Floyd goes in for it. Right. Because he knows what it's like to be in that territory, whereas, I mean, once again, transference, you got those questions because, let's be honest, if you're in good enough shape to go five minutes all out, three minutes is actually going to be pretty easy. But you're right, the difference between right. 25 total minutes of work and 36 total minutes of work, that's especially, obviously, something of that high intensity where all it takes is simply a momentary lapse of concentration and, yeah, you're unconscious on the mat. Right. So, it's a great, great point. Yeah, I just, I have a hard time. Uh, they're both going to come in and shake, would be my guess. Boy, mm-hmm. If you ever watch, you know, he's, he's an arrogant guy, but if you ever watch videos of him training, he comes in to fight and ready to go. He comes in shape. It's quite incredible how much he trains to get himself there. He has admitted that as he's gotten older, it's been more about smart training rather than training extremely hard. Um, he's putting a lot more into his recovery. He lives a clean lifestyle. He's going to come in ready to go. Um, but so will Connor. So I, I, the cardio element will be interesting. I don't think that Connor's going to gas out. I think that he's going to be discouraged by mm-hmm. him. Well, it's, once again, the stressors are just different enough. It's, you know, it's a different place to be in <clears throat> from the, just the sheer, you're right, discouragement. So just the mental game of having to go for a certain period of time. And, you know, having a little bit better idea, essentially, of where you stand, or literally have your opponent throughout a match, as opposed to doing, you know, everything, just obviously trading blows and defending yourself. And, yeah, Floyd is not an easy person to hit. And I don't think he can try to go an old-school post-prison Tyson of just, you know, raging bull at them, or at uh, Floyd. And he may try. He may try. Connor may press the action in that way. I think that that could make it entertaining. I will be entertained if Connor lands a clean shot mm-hmm. early in the fight against Floyd. But I don't, I don't see it going much more than that. You know, um, Connor, if he were able to hit Floyd and knock him down, 
and then jump on top of him and pummel him as he would in an octagon, of course, Connor wins. Yeah. But he can't do that. And mind you, if, if Sugar Shane Mosley, who had an extremely hard punch, couldn't knock Floyd down with eight ounce gloves, I don't think that Connor can with 10. Mm-hmm. And I watched Shane Mosley in the second round of that fight. This is a guy that I believe, I thought might be the one to beat Floyd. In the second round, he hit him with two of the hardest punches I've ever seen Floyd eat. And Floyd came back and picked him apart. And that's just what he does. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know if he'll be able to knock out Connor or if he'll just do that and pick him apart. I tend to think he will want to knock out Connor McGregor because this becomes UFC versus professional boxing, even though it's not. It's in the ring, and this is a boxing match. Yeah. I tend to think he will probably go for a knockout. Do you mm-hmm. give Connor a chance? I, you know, I still, it's it's like anything else. I, I'm saying it's it's above, it's <laughs> slightly above negligible. But right. that's, but I mean, exactly. It's like anything else. You yeah. know, if he, if he, I almost wonder if he comes out raging and just try, I mean, obviously that's their camp. They got to figure out what tactics they like to do. And I don't like to get too much into speaking out of the wrong orifice. But of the tactics, obviously the tactics that people have tried on Floyd haven't worked. So I almost wonder if going, you know, just going crazy and really just trying to work hard to land those blows, but, I mean, it's a different game. Not that it's never easy to knock another human being out when you're in any type of fight, uh, whether you're in MMA or boxing, but if you're in MMA, your hand position is just different than your than your gloves position in boxing. You know, it is harder <clears throat> to hit somebody in the head in boxing than it is in MMA, because MMA, you've got to be ready for someone to shoot in on you, for them to kick you. You know, you can't just pr- essentially protect only from your waist up. So, you know, that's... Yeah, I mean, he's done a great job of knocking out people in MMA, but, yeah, just the transference is not there. I almost wonder if he goes the other direction of just trying to turn this into a, you know, kind of a point boxing. Really just sit back, use the reach, and... But then you're trying to match skill for skill, and, I mean, we saw how well that worked out for Ronda Rousey. You know, right when you <clears throat> try to meet somebody at their game and you're the amateur. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if Connor dared to try to make this that kind of fight, then it, he would have less of a chance than he has. Um, I, Marcos Maidana tried to bull rush Floyd Mayweather mm-hmm. in their first fight. He was relatively successful. He got to Floyd a bit. Floyd ended up winning the fight, but Maidana had a few rounds that went his way. Um, he just has a way of discouraging people. Canelo Alvarez was vicious, you know, prior to fighting Floyd. He got in the ring with Floyd, and Floyd just kind of picked him apart. He didn't lose a single round in that fight to Canelo Alvarez. So, and that was a 23-year-old. And with a lot of boxing experience. Bingo. And that's the thing. These are the folks that, you know, they're, they aren't in the, I mean, let's be honest, with the striking skills of Conor McGregor, he's above what would you consider a flat-out novice boxer. But right. by no means a master. And that's, when one master can pick apart another master, that's, ugh, that's, that's obviously an intense level of skill to which you're not going to easily usurp that from just doing a training camp for a couple months. And, yeah, I guess at the end of the day, when getting back to the, the sport in general, obviously it's great for the bank accounts of everyone behind the fight, you know, and the fighters themselves. But as a true, you know, it's not like we're having a conversation about, you know, when it was Pacquiao versus Floyd. When we were like, ah, oh, I wonder if what you know what's going to happen here. Like, you know, who knows? Maybe Pacquiao could do it. You know, it's still it looks dicey. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just a, it, it's compelling though. We're talking about it. Oh no! It's, I mean, it's interesting, but at the same time, I wonder if it's going to be. You know, it, obviously there's going to be a lot of buildup, 
but the actual yeah. payoff is going to be like, what? Why did we just watch that? It you know? could be. That could happen. Well, it could potentially just toy with them for the entire fight. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't recall if it's going to be a ten or a twelve round fight. It may just be ten. I think they're set for twelve. Um, there's, is it twelve? Yeah. Yeah. In any case, I don't. I don't personally see it going that far. I think that Floyd is going to probably just purge him to the point where you know. Connor, I, I don't think Connor's going to quit, but I think that he'll be quite discouraged by Floyd. Mm-hmm. Hey, but if he connects with, I don't know. I mean, if, if he connects with something hard, it, yeah. So it, this is the most interesting fight. Uh, unfortunately, you know, Canelo Alvarez is about to fight Triple G in September. That's the fight we should be talking about, but we're interested in this one. Well, you know, we can uh, we'll do a little follow up to talk about that, and yeah. you know, when actually. Uh, do a little bit more homework about that because that one is actually a fight. Yeah, two professional fighters actually fighting each other in the same sport. Funny how that works. <laughs> Funny how that works. You know, I, it, it's interesting though. I'm I've been kind of following it, and I am interested in seeing what happens. I'll definitely be watching. Yep, I I will. I don't know if I'm going to play pay the full uh, pay per view. You know, but. I think I'll find myself. You don't know how much they'll charge either. Oh, God. They charged $100 for Pacquiao versus Mayweather, so this could be expensive. I might just go to the sports bar and watch it. Bingo. Let's go, you know, go talk with other people where we can all look around each other like, we really thought this was going to be a thing? Or, eh, who yeah. knows? Maybe walk out of there going, wow, Floyd finally got his. Highly doubtable. Yeah, you know, it, crazier things, I guess, have happened. One of the comparisons that was made was um, the, the champion at the time, I think it was 1994, Michael Moore, who was undefeated, fighting a very old George Foreman. Yes. But you want to talk remember, about remember that? incredibly great tactical decisions where Foreman was essentially yeah. in crab pose the entire fight, let Moore gas himself out, and then, you know, obviously George Foreman still has one heck of a punch. And he took advantage of it. And yeah, so that's the puncher's chance. That's when people talk about puncher's chance. But you got to be careful there because I think a lot of it gets painted in the at, at that point still fresh in people's memory. Muhammad Ali coming back when he shouldn't have. You know right. where they and had seen that time and time again when he shouldn't have. It, exactly when you see like how great they were in their prime and how like when it's over it's over, and you know just a master. Or masterful move of just going with the only tactic that would work w- with the assumption that, you know, how Moore was going to fight was going to line up directly with that tactic, which obviously is how it worked out. But, yeah. When he kept on, it looked like Foreman was out of shape, and he was. He was heavy. He was 45 years old, fighting a 26-year-old world champion and if you watch it though he toward uh, the middle and later rounds of the fight he consistently is hitting Michael Moore with a hook with with a left hook which is pushing because he's powerful it's kind of pushing Michael Moore over a little bit so that he can line up his straight right and he did it over and over again until finally he landed the perfect straight right, and Moore was counting the life. So even still, you've got a brilliant boxer against a young, very good boxer. Yeah. Even still, keep in mind, George Foreman was an Olympic gold medalist back in 1968. He'd boxed his whole life at that point. Yeah. I mean, he got so the to... puncher's chance was still possessed by a very good boxer. Yeah, it's that whole thing of the harder you work, the more luck you have. Like, it's people can take these examples and kind of twist them and pull them a little bit out of context. George Foreman was an incredible boxer. Like, when he lost to Ali, it's because Ali did a masterful job of tactically getting Foreman out of the fight. You know? Yeah, it's probably uh, the, the seventh or eighth best heavyweight in history fighting, you know, the first or second best heavyweight in history. So, Foreman was 24 years old, he was younger than Ali, but Ali wasn't that old, I think he was 32 at the time. Mm -hmm. And he, he, uh, the great boxer, was beating an even greater boxer. 
who had a great strategy. And even still, you know, back then they said, oh, we didn't have a chance. They said he was going to die that night. People thought he was done. Oh, you were going to die that night. Yeah, speaking of how powerful that Foreman could punch. Like. Yeah. Yeah, Foreman was knocking everyone out. Yeah. So, I, Conor McGregor can punch, too. I just, I don't think he can get through to Floyd. I think that Floyd is just so defensively brilliant that I just don't see Conor McGregor getting to him. And the comparison between boxers versus boxers of the past doesn't work here because those boxers that were supposed to lose and didn't were still very, very experienced elite level boxers. <laughs> yes. Not not someone who's never had a boxing match. <sighs> what planet do we I'm live just on? Saying, I'm just saying he doesn't have a chance. That's my that's that's my feel here. It's, I, I hope it's interesting. Yeah, ex- I just, God, I just hope it's entertaining. Just something where it's like, okay, like this was this was worth doing. Like, I'm glad they made this happen because this was interesting. Not, well, they don't have to ever work again. Good for them. You know? Yeah. yeah. It, to me, it looks like a money grab. And for Floyd, it is. Because, like I said, Floyd, you know, wants to make the most money with the least pitching potential for injury. That's, that's what Floyd's at there. Mm-hmm. Especially now that he's over 40 years old. But I just... I would say the same thing about Conor McGregor not having a chance if he was fighting, you know, a 25th ranked welterweight that nobody really knows very well. He wouldn't have a chance to win boxing. It's even worse when you're fighting perhaps one of the best boxers of all time. It's just the, the sheer absurdity of this reality. Well, it, you know, with sports, I always give people chances, but this is this is a silly this is a silly discussion in the sense that people actually believe Conor McGregor. A lot of people think Conor McGregor will win this fight. I I feel like this is when Jordan went to play baseball, which don't get me wrong, yeah. you know, Jordan. I mean, he was playing like double A ball, like he wasn't bad. But there's a right. there's a giant divide between playing AAA baseball and being in the major leagues, much less being the same caliber athlete that he was in basketball. Where you know, right. it's I mean, yeah, I bet Conor McGregor could probably you know take somebody in the amateur could take definitely a number of amateur boxers, and well, he could in the yeah when you get to I mean below the top twenty, I think you know there's there's definitely a solid shot, but there's a big difference between, yeah, I'm going to go play, yeah, I'm going to go play basketball, and then I'm going to go take Steph Curry one-on-one after, you know, because I've been playing right. baseball or football for all these years. Like, it just, yeah, no, it doesn't transfer like that. You know, it, it, it's just fun to me that people try to do it, and I think it's good. I think it speaks to Conor McGregor, the guy who's got a lot of courage. Oh, yeah. But... Do you remember when CM Punk tried his hand in the UFC? Oh God! Was that was that, that was that less than CM a minute? Punk had been, it was. It wasn't long. I don't remember the exact time. Um, and mind you, CM Punk was not fighting the best ultimate fighter in the world. He was fighting a kid who's about 24 years old with a few fights under his belt. A few, three, maybe four. Mm-hmm. But he was young and he was up and coming and he was, he'd been training for many years to get to that point. CM Punk was a professional wrestler. He has no amateur wrestling background at all. So that's, that's the differential between he and Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. But he trained for two years. He trained for two full years for that fight. And that's kind of how it, how it ended. Um, with two years of training, Conor McGregor would suffer a similar fate, but he doesn't have two years of training. He has a couple months. Start the Rocky training montage right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, um, I, I hope it's interesting. But I felt compelled to kind of discuss it with you to see what you thought of it. 
and also to let you know that, you know, it's seldom as I think a fight's going to be this one-sided or any sporting event Mm -hmm. is going to be that one-sided. This one will. (laughs) Well, thanks for the conversation. I I feel like I'm I'm disturbing your your, uh, expectations. (laughs) No, 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 you're not disturbing my expectations. (laughs) If anything, this has just been a good... You know, it's like anything else. It's easy to get into, it's easy, I wouldn't say to be a sycophant, but just to be a fan of an athlete or another athlete, and then obviously sure. dislike another one, and I think, you know, part of that is preying upon that, because both of these are very polarizing characters in their given sport. Yeah. So, you know, people have wanted to see someone beat Floyd, and I think... And I, I, would, I would like to see it too. Yeah, and I think Floyd's done a masterful job of, I wouldn't say cultivating kind of a villain status, but definitely... You know, being that polarizing character that he is, that and that attracts more fans, which in turn attracts more money. Which then again, and Floyd gets paid. You know, it's just it's brilliant from that perspective. It is. And yeah, he he is um he is the the boxer, the one boxer that I can think of who's really been brilliant in that sense. Boxers aren't well protected financially. Many go very broke. Oh God, yes. Yeah, they're not well protected. Joe Lewis ended up broke, and that he might be the best heavyweight of all time. You know, but he ended up broke. Oh, you know, Tyson's had his financial <laughs> issues. Obviously, Holyfield, I think, went into bankruptcy. Like, absolutely. Yes, to where Holyfield might still be fighting. I don't even know what he's doing. I mean, he still looks like he's in incredible shape. Anytime I've seen any recent interviews of him, like the guy is still put together. But yeah, he is. He is. He's he's well developed, but I, you know, these guys. So they haven't been protected well. So I credit Floyd in that regard. Mm-hmm. Floyd has consistently waited until people almost got tired of fights to make them happen for the biggest possible payout and the least potential for damage. Yeah, which once again, brilliant. I mean, there's a reason why CTE was initially uh, given a Latin name that was essentially named after taking too many blows to the head. You know. Right. Where, yeah, he's and he obviously has just masterful defense, but some of the best defensive work I've ever seen. Yeah, he and Muhammad Ali, Pernell Whitaker is another one, but yeah, he doesn't get hit. Even against a guy like Manny Pacquiao for twelve rounds, Pacquiao got through to him a few times. Yeah, but Pacquiao was also having some shoulder issues that he would later let. Yeah, he had a reportedly a, a torn rotator cuff. My personal thought on that is that the torn rotator cuff happened during the fight. Mm-hmm. But he, he says it was weeks before, but in those early rounds of the fight, he was throwing punches with, with pretty good velocity. Um, he might just be that tough. I don't know. Yeah. yeah and then, I know that Conor McGregor will be tough, so he'll fight through injury if he has to. Yeah. And I guess the hope here is that Floyd... It's much slower than he was two years ago. Yeah, and that's... He gets caught a few times. It's just, you know, you're hoping that he comes in overconfident, but it doesn't seem to be his ML. You know, he's not going to pull a, yeah, he, a Tyson versus, a, oh, God, Buster Douglas, you know? just Yeah, yeah, I don't see that happening <laughs> in this fight. It would be interesting. Um, it's interesting anyway. You don't see this often. You know, mm-hmm. Two people from different disciplines get together and and do the same event. Yeah. So it's a great conversation. We'll have to. Yeah, those are just those have just been my thoughts on this. We'll do a post uh, we'll do a post analysis after uh, the bloodbath. I mean the the fight, and uh, we'll <laughs> we have absolutely to absolutely will. We'll talk about some more upcoming ones, man. Thanks for the conversation. Yeah, we, should, we should continue to do this about various sporting events that we have strong differing opinions about or not differing opinions about but just um, it's been it's been fun